So this lesson is 3.5, and we'll call it A because it'll probably go into two videos. But um, the, the name of the section is called Introduction to Functions. Functions are something that you will see from now on. It doesn't matter what math class you're in. There will be functions. So my job in this section is to help you understand what in the world a function is so that when you're talked about or when it's talked about over the years, you will know what in the world it is. So basically what a function is, is that when you put something in, you get something out. So for instance, if we have this machine, this is how it was explained to me a long time ago, is when we put something in here, it's going to spit something out. So this being a function machine, if this is x plus 3, every time I put a number in here, it doesn't matter what number I put, it's going to spit out an answer. If I put 6 in, it's going to spit out a 9. A 1, it's going to give me a 4. A 2, it's going to give me a 5, because I'm going to put it in the machine. I'm going to do that to it, and it's going to give me an answer. So it's kind of like the idea that if you get a job and that job pays $25 per hour. So at the end of the first week, you worked 20 hours. So what you end up with at the end of the first week is $500. Okay. So let's look at how that is a function. If this is the number of hours you put in, and this is the amount of money you make, then the relationship between $25 an hour and 20 hours is 20 times $25. And that gives you your $500. So it's kind of like this function machine here, that if we put in, I'm going to make that 25x, so $25 times the number of hours. And if x equals the number of hours you work, let's say we put in 20 hours, put that in there, it will spit out $500. If we put in 10, it will spit out $250. If we put in 40, it will spit out $1,000. So all that's doing is when you put something in, it's going to give you something out. And the formal definition of a function tells me that, let's get rid of all this, tells me that it pairs one element in one set with one element from a second. <clears throat> so, even more specifically, each element in one set. So let's say we have a set and it has the numbers uh, 10, 20, and 40 in it. It will, when we have um, $25 an hour, when you move this and multiply it, it's going to kick out $250. And I know I'm repeating myself again, but that's what a function does. You put something in the machine, you do what it says, multiplying it by 25, and this is what you get out. So it pairs each element in one set with exactly one element from the second set. Now, if I took 40 times 25, I will always get 1,000. I will never get something else other than 1,000. So that means this is a function because it takes one element in this set does something to it and 
gives me one answer here. It cannot give me two answers. It can't give me 1,000 one time I put 40 in here and 1,500 the next time. It will always give me one answer. So one item in, one item out. This side over here, what we put in is called the domain. And what we get out is called the range. And a lot of times what I like to do is say, this is the X value, this is the Y value. So D is lower in the alphabet than R, X is lower than Y, so that's how I keep them straight. D goes with X, R goes with Y. So the domain is your input, and your Y is your output, what you get when you, when you put it in there. So there are a couple different ways to look at um, get rid of that functions. We have, first of all, what is called a function map. And a function map is very similar to what I did. We've got a domain and we have a range and we have a bunch of numbers here. And when we map from one through the machine to our range, we can only get one number out of it. So we may get um, four, two would go to five, three would go to six, four, seven, and five, eight. So that is a function. When one of our elements in the domain gives me or pairs with one of my elements over here called the range. If you want to make this not a function, then if this 2 went to 7 and it also went to 5, that means it is not a function. It went to two different numbers. But there is an instance where you can go to two different numbers, and that is, let's say we put a 2 in the machine, and it gives us a 5, our blue here. And let's say we put a 3 in the machine, and it also gave me a 5. That is okay. As long as one number only goes to 5, and this number only goes to 5. That's okay. It's where this goes to 7 and 2 goes to 5. That's when you get into trouble. But two numbers can go to the same number in the range. That's all right. Okay, so let's look at example 2. We have um, in any, or an equation here. Get a pen that works. Y equals 7.5x where 0 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 40. And they're saying state the domain and the range for the function. Okay, so remember I said domain is really another way of writing x, because that's usually what you input. So the domain will be all of the possible numbers that x can be. Well, right there. x is a number that is 0 or bigger but is still less than or equal to 40. So if we had a number line here, 0 to 40, x could be here, here, and all numbers in between. So that's the range, or I'm sorry, the domain. The range, on the other hand, is once we put all of these numbers starting at 0 and going to 40, into this equation, what y are we going to get? Okay, so one of the ways to do that is to put the smallest number in here, which is zero. So when we put zero in here, we get zero times 7.5, which is zero. And then the biggest number we put in here 7.5 times 40 gives me 300. 
So 300 is the biggest number that my y can be, and the smallest number is 0. So my domain is any of the numbers here. My range is once I put all of these numbers in here, multiply by 7.5, my answer to that is going to go here. So I put the biggest number in and get 300, smallest number in and get 0, and then I just make the symbol, oops, the same symbol um, that I had for up here, right here, because it can be 300 if this is 40. It can be 0 if this is 0. So kind of gives you an idea of what that is. So the function machine is actually the equation here that you put your domain in or your x value in to see what your y value is going to be. And your y value will be all of those possible answers. Okay, this is example three, and we're just going to kind of look at these equations here real quick. Um, Kendra tosses a softball into the air. I don't care that it's underhand or overhand. The distance of the ball above her hand is given by the function. Okay, so here is the function. Here is the equation they give us. So what they're asking us to do is um, H is the height of the ball. T is the time in seconds. Construct a table that gives the height of the ball at quarter second intervals starting with t is 0 and ending with t is 2. So every one-fourth of a second, we want to find out how high that ball is. So at 0, where she before she releases the ball, we're going to multiply um, 32 times 0 for t minus 16 t squared equals 0. So when she starts... The distance from her hand before she throws it is zero. So that's our domain. We put it in the function machine. It spits out our range, which is our y value or our answer. Then it says in quarter second intervals. Now we do the same thing with one fourth. We put that in there and it gives us seven. So when, when our domain is one fourth or when our um, x is one fourth, our y is seven. So when we're all done, we can graph all of these points. So this would be our x, and this is our y. So um, if we are going to graph this, this would be 0, 0. This would be 1 fourth, 7. 1 half, 12. 3 fourths, 15. Are you seeing that I'm taking that answer there, my x and my y? So if I graph this, I'm going to end up with a graph that looks like very similar to what this ball does. It goes up, it hits a peak, and then it starts coming back down. Okay, it's a function. We put in one number, our time, and it gives us um, one distance. Okay. So this is our time, and this is our distance. So let's look at this on the graph. So our domain is going to be all numbers from 0, because we started at 0 seconds, um, is less than or equal to our time, which is less than or equal to our maximum amount of time two seconds. So that's our domain. It's going to be any number between and including zero and two. Now our range is going to be our y value. Once we put in all of our times, what are our what are our possible numbers? Well, zero, put a t there, which is less than or equal to, what's the biggest number? before they start decreasing, 16. So 0 is going to be, or t is going to be 0 or bigger up to and including 16. Now notice, when I put 1 half in, I get 12. When I put 3 halves in, I also get 12. So remember what I said earlier. My x values can um, 
go toward, let me use yellow here on this dark, my, my one half goes to 12, and my five, or my three halves also goes to 12. I mean, it shows up there, but they both go to 12. That's okay if my x values go to multiple numbers over here. I just can't have the same number go to several different numbers over here, okay? So several numbers here to one number over here, but not several, or not one number over here on the x side going to several numbers on the other side. That makes sense. So each one of these sets of ordered pairs are called a relation, R-E-L-A-T-I-O-N. Okay, and we need to find out if this relation is a function on the top and if it's a function on the, bo the bottom one is a function. And the easy way to tell is, is there an x value that repeats itself? No. So therefore, it is a function down here. 0, 1, 2, 1. 1 repeats itself, so therefore this is not a function. So whenever the x value repeats itself, it's not a function. If it doesn't repeat itself, it is a function. So just real quick, let's do this in a map. A map says if we have a 2, it goes to the 1. 4 goes to the 3. 6 goes to the 5. And 8 goes to the 7. Each one of our domains maps to one of our y's, or one of our range. So um, let's look at this one. We have a zero, a one, a two, and because the one repeats there, we just don't even show it, we just show it one time. So a zero maps to a four, the one maps to a six, the two maps to a four, and this one maps to a five. Okay, that means, oops, let me draw that to a five. That means it's not a function because one maps to two values over here. Whenever that happens, whenever an X goes to two different places, it's not a function. So for instance, if you were looking at a car and Come on. And that car was a 19, oh, come on, you race. Was a 1967 Mustang. And you saw it one place for 25,000. And you saw it someplace else for 17,000. That is not a function because the, the year of the Mustang gave you two different prices depending on where you look. So because they start at the same place on the left and go two different directions, it is not a function. So it doesn't really matter as far as the price of the car, but the reality of it is um, it is not a function. Okay. Last thing I want to go into is the vertical line test, and this will just take a second. If we have a graph and we have something like a graph like that. If you can take a vertical line anywhere on that graph and only go through one point each time you draw a vertical line, then it's a function. If for some reason the graph you go through it more than one time, oh, let me get my I'm trying to go too fast here. 
and the graph looks like that, one time, one time, one time, three times here, here, and here. So therefore, if it does it one time, even if it doesn't cross any other time more than once, this one piece, that one vertical line makes it not a function. Okay, so that's an easy way to do it once you have a graph. And that's it.